The 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene Law 39. Stir up waters to catch fish Anger and emotions are strategically counterproductive. You must always stay calm and objective, but if you can make your enemies angry while staying calm yourself, you gain a decided advantage. Put your enemies off balance, find the chink in their vanity through which you can rattle them, and you hold the strings. By the late 1920s, Haile Selassie had nearly achieved his goal of assuming total control over Ethiopia, a country he felt needed strong and unified leadership. As regent to the Empress Sauditu and heir to the throne, Selassie had spent several years weakening the power of Ethiopia's various warlords. Now only one real obstacle stood in his way, the Empress and her husband Ras Guksa. Selassie knew the royal couple hated him and wanted to get rid of him, so to cut short their plotting he made Guksa the governor of the northern province of Begimedr, forcing him to leave the capital where the Empress lived. For several years Guksa played the loyal administrator, but Selassie did not trust him. He knew that Guksa and the Empress were plotting revenge. As time passed and Guksa made no move, the chances of a plot only increased. Selassie drew Guksa out, got under his skin, and pushed him into action before he was ready. Guksa fell for the trap that had been laid for him. Before Selassie had ordered Guksa to fight the Azebu Galas, he had secured the support of the Ethiopian church, and before the revolt got underway, he had bribed several of Guksa's key allies not to show up for battle. As the rebel army marched south, airplanes flew overhead dropping leaflets announcing that the highest church officials had recognized Selassie as the true Christian leader of Ethiopia, and that they had been excommunicated Guksa for fomenting a civil war. And as battle loomed and the support that Guksa's allies had promised him failed to show up, soldiers began to flee or defect. When the battle came, the rebel army quickly collapsed. Refusing to surrender, Ras Guksa was killed in the fighting. On April 30, Selassie issued a formal proclamation announcing his new title, Emperor of Ethiopia. A sovereign should never launch an army out of anger. A leader should never start a war out of wrath. Sun Tzu, 4th century BC. There is seven problems with the angry response. At first it may strike fear and terror but only in some. And as the days pass and the storm clears, other responses emerge. Embarrassment and uneasiness about the shelter's capacity for going out of control. Resentment festers of what has been said. You always make unfair and exaggerated accusations. A few such tirades and people are counting the days until you are gone. To show your frustration is to show that you have lost your power to shape events. It is the helpless action of the child who resorts to a hysterical fit to get his way. Never let them see you sweat. Tantrums neither intimidate nor inspire loyalty. They only create doubts and uneasiness about your power. Exposing your weakness, these stormy eruptions often herald a fall. The essence of the law is, when the waters are still, your opponents have the time and space to plot actions that they will initiate and control. So steer the waters, force the fish to the surface, get them to act before they are ready and steal the initiative. The best way to do this is to play on uncontrollable emotions. Pride, vanity, love and hate. Once the water is stirred up, the little fish cannot help but race to the bait. The angrier they become, the less control they have. And finally, they are caught in the whirlpool you have made, and they drown. And that is it for this law. Be sure to dive deeper into it with part 2, Emotional Reaction. And as always, thanks for watching.